NFR Extra is a weekly podcast that focuses on the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and features icons that embody the rodeo and Western lifestyle. And I got home the very next week and I had 17,000 bucks I'd just put in my bank account. I never had that kind of money before in my life. And Dad walks in, he goes, Boy, don't you have horses to shoe? I said, No, sir. I said, I'll enter it up for the next couple of weeks. We're going to see how this goes. I'll walk up to the card table, blackjack table normally, and I'll give him a $100 bill. They'll give me one black chip and I'll put it down. And I'll keep playing that chip until I lose. Whenever I lose my $100, I'll go to the rodeo. All my bad luck's out of the way, and I'm ready to win. Oh, no. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That is God, awesome. I got so lost. much good luck coming. I've lost. <laughs> when you're raised amongst champions, mm-hmm. you're probably going to be champion yourself. You can, If we call him right now, we can ask him where he's going to school at, and he'll say WT, Wagaspec Tech. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, it's Lainey Wilson, singer-songwriter in Nashville, and I am here with NFR Extra. Joining us on NFR Extra, Tyler Wagaspak and our co-host, Steve Goder and Andy Seiler. How many co-hosts do you have to have before it just becomes host and not... I, is co two? I think co is actually two, so maybe that's incorrect. Well, I, it doesn't matter. We're going to go with it, though. I like it. Tyler, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Las Later. Vegas, bright <laughs> and early. What... Uh, Obviously, with your stature, you're built for steer wrestling, but when did it click that you knew you were going to be a steer wrestler? Uh, whenever I was little, you wouldn't believe me if I told you that I was going to be a steer wrestler. I, I graduated high school at 145 pounds. No. Like I was I was little bitty. I, uh, malnourished or what? No, I, I was just, I was skinny. I mean, they, my dad used to always say, I don't know what the heck to do to him. He can't get him to gain no weight. And, but uh, no, he and I worked hard in the practice pen, and I mean, he got me to to the technique down that I have right now. And whenever I got out of high school, I wound up getting a personal trainer and started putting on weight and getting some size on me. And I got fat. I got slow. I was strong <laughs> as can be, but I was slow. I couldn't move. And then uh, finally we, we kind of backed off of that a little bit and kept on uh, kept going to practice and everything. And then I finally, I guess, grew up a little bit more and got to the size I am now. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so talk about that technique. Was it was it just your dad? I mean, did your dad rodeo? How, how did he know? how to teach his son, because I can promise you, me and my son fight whenever I try to teach him something. Uh, my dad, he used to circuit rodeo whenever I was growing up and stuff. And then uh, he would go out and help uh, Mr. Tom Corney is a guy to help out with some schools and all that kinds of stuff. But now growing up, I mean, my dad, he was, he was a little small guy, you know, I mean, he was always about big on technique and would, uh, would always compare runs to different guys that were having success out there and stuff like that. And uh, as far as teaching me and stuff, my dad, Nobody's ever, I mean, I always, I always brag on him a lot, but not near about as much as I should. My dad would always come up to somebody and tell, tell them the positive first, or like whenever me and him was in the practice pen working and maybe went to a rodeo or made a run where we didn't have a lot of success with it. He would almost get excited. Hey, that's something we can go home and work on. Whereas a lot of people, you see them and they're like, Hey, you did this wrong. You did that. Dad was always one that's sitting there and he's working together with you. So then, I mean, heck, whenever all the trinkets and all the success and all that kind of stuff started coming in, I mean, heck, I'm over here with Dad. I'm like, look what we did. You know, it wasn't yeah. just look what I did. You know, that's I mean, awesome. he, he, he pushed me hard to get to where I am. But at the same sense, I mean, he was always the one standing right behind me, helping me to get to where I am. So at a high school level, is that where that all began? Uh, yeah. Whenever I was little, I, I wrote chaos a lot whenever I was little. And then, uh, always wanted to steer wrestle my dad used to and like i say i was real small so he would buy little longhorn calves out of the sail barn that had probably three inches of horn on each side of their head and he would tape pvc pipe across the back of their head just so that i had enough horn to be able to, <laughs> to steer wrestle with and every evening he'd go in there he'd cut the duct tape off turn the little steers out and get them freshened up for the next day and then we'd go right back into it because i mean if i was going to grab one of the steers like the size that they were practicing on and stuff like that i wasn't going to have a chance yeah i mean i was i was a little bitty so you have three state championships in steer wrestling in high school, but how big were the steers in high school then? They were normal sized steers in high school, and uh, my the first year that I won the uh, the state in high school, there was twenty one rodeos, and I won first at two at two of the uh, events the entire year long. My dad would bring teams of horses; he'd haze for all the other kids and everything, and help everybody out. And I can remember I won two uh, 
two rodeos throughout the entire year, but I placed at 20 rodeos in a row, and that was placing in the top five at 20 rodeos in a row. The first rodeo, the steer stopped in the gate. The other 20 rodeos we placed every single time. Did you feel like there was a shock whenever you went to the national high school finals? I mean, or did you feel like at the Louisiana state level you felt prepared? I felt really prepared whenever I was going into the high school rodeos in Louisiana and all that kind of stuff. I never had my sights on going out rodeo or any of that kind of stuff till probably my senior year in high school or so. I started going around to the different amateur rodeos and all kinds of stuff, and we were having a lot of success there too. So, I mean, we just kind of kept slowly getting into everything. And then uh, it come down to the time where I was going to either go to college or I was going to get a job. And I told Dad, I said, I, I wanted to be a horseshoe. I said, heck, I'm, I think I know I'm I know enough people around here. I was already helping out several guys shoeing horses and stuff like that. So I went off and went to horseshoeing school in 2011 and 2000, uh, 2012. That's what I did. I went to the circuit rodeos and stuff in 2012. And uh, in, in the winter of 2013, I wound up getting into uh, San Angelo. Or not getting into San Angelo, but we went to San Angelo, and I won second at the rodeo. Well, San Angelo still does a deal where whoever's the high money winner out of their rodeo gets to go into Houston. So my dad and I, we pull up. I'm a little bitty kid pulling up at Rodeo <laughs> Houston over here, backing in the box. Well, I wound up going all the way to the dang Final Four. And I got home the very next week, and I had 17000 bucks I'd just put in my bank account. I never had that kind of money before in my life. And dad walks in. He goes, boy, don't you have horses to shoe? I said, no, sir. I said, I'll enter it up for the next couple of weeks. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> and I, I haven't got underneath another horse since. I pay a guy to shoe my horses right now. That's, and I'm, yeah. I'm certified and everything. I'm just, I ain't doing it. Not even a little bit. Yeah, that and roughing are about the two things. That, <laughs> mm -hmm. If you want to do it, that's fine, but I don't. Yep, yep, yep. So Louisiana has, there's something because we see you at the junior world finals there during no Berry steer wrestling and Louisiana has got some studs that are, represent that state. Absolutely. There's a, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of young bulldoggers out there that are, uh, they go to different clinics and stuff around there. Uh, like I mentioned, Mr. Tom Corney's name earlier, he's done a lot of stuff for, if, if kids are going to, to learn all the fundamentals and stuff of steer wrestling, the great teacher, he'll sit there and I mean, make sure that they are going to understand why your body moves the way it does and how you can make a steer, uh, how the steer's body moves and all that kinds of stuff. Like he, he's really good at breaking it down and building a young man's confidence up. And I think that's why Louisiana has a lot of good steer wrestlers or good young steer wrestlers coming out of there is because that, that man can put some confidence into, wow. into a young man. That's impressive. But those kids that I see from Louisiana, they're not a buck 45. No, no, no. There, there's, no. there's something in the water down there. I don't know, late bloomers. I don't yeah. know what it is, but yeah, we we all grow up later and old in life. Yeah, that's impressive. Might be the gumbo recipe. Yeah, it must be. You'd think with all the stuff we eat, we'd be 500 pounds. What's but. what's the best Cajun dish for anybody that's never been to Louisiana and had Cajun fare? If so, so you got to start at a beginner level and then give us the expert Cajun dish. All right. Well, if you come down to Louisiana, you got to get your gumbo, your etouffee, your all that kind of stuff. And then you're going to go to getting stuff like a uh, sauce pecan, uh, like the shrimp creoles, all that kinds of stuff. And then we get kind of out in the woods with them and you get turtle and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And you're laughing right now, but I've got a guy down home that can cook turtle for you and you'll push the best ribeye you ever had away. Really? No. I, I, Holy every, cow. And everybody says it exactly like y'all both said. Really? No, there's no way, but I'm telling you. Huh. Okay, I'm I'll getting an education. Your, yeah, I'll take your word on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you come down to my house, we'll serve something in front of you. We ain't going to tell you what it is. Yeah, you just you eat can, it and like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, whatever you tell me to do, I'm probably going to do it. I'm, I don't want the yeah. consequence. Yeah, you'll have my mama I, fussing at you. She's going to make you eat something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Whatever you say. I went down to Gonzales, Louisiana some years back, and I went to one of the fish fish broil deals. And I was like, so you did, you know, and they taught me how to do it. And I was like, man, these things are popping them down and I got a pile and I was like my lips <laughs> are on fire yeah Kyle Irwin he comes down to the house all the time he's from Alabama which he's from where all the spices and stuff are but whenever we ball crawfish and everything whatever he's drinking he'll start rubbing it on his lips just mm -hmm. rub the bottom of the soda <laughs> can or the beer yeah, can whatever yeah. he has just rub it on his lips trying to cool his lips off <laughs> I think I have a blister uh huh yeah oh, they yeah. flame up how did it feel last year to, to walk away with the world championship here in Las Vegas I think I was more proud of the last year's than any of them. I, I broke the barrier in the second round, and I felt like I was playing catch up the whole time. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna refer back to my dad because that's the first guy I walked up to whenever I broke the barrier uh, in the uh, second round. And he come up to me, he said, "Hell, he said that was a great start, great run." 
I said, I broke the barrier. He said, yeah, but he said, if you had to back in the box and do it again, are you going to run at it again? I said, well, yeah. He said, well, then good job. He said, we'll just go place in the next eight rounds and see what happens. And sure enough, we placed in eight rounds in a row right after Holy that. Holy cow. And wound up catching back up. Talk about a premonition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you, you mentioned getting a good start. Tell us a little bit about your horse and then who you usually like to haze for you because mm-hmm. – I feel like hazers are the most neglected part of conversations when it comes to steer wrestling. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my my go to hazers is uh, definitely Tyler Pearson. Uh, Kyle Irwin hazes for me a bunch, and then uh, the young man that won Rookie of the Year last year, Mark Joiner. I mean, he he grew up practicing with me all the time and stuff. And uh, they're 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 kind of my my three main guys. If you if you see me back in the box for real money, one of them three is going to be on the side of me. Uh, but yeah, Pearson doesn't get the credit. I, actually, I, I'd say Pearson. Pearson is a whiz with horses. I mean, he's always going to be riding great horses. And but the one that needs a real compliment is the gray horse that he's riding, Metallica, right now. That horse has hazed from that horse has made more money in the NFR than any other horse I believe that's ever been there. Nobody knows that. Wow. Uh, they they don't understand that that horse in two thousand and se- no two thousand eighteen no seventeen two thousand seventeen that horse hazed for over half a million dollars in that building. Holy wow! Cow. Nobody knew that because they they never added it up. What I won, Ty Erickson won, uh, Pearson won, Irwin won, Rowdy Parrot. All those guys are uh, getting hazed on by Metallica. That uh the horse I mean he's. That, that horse needs – if they ever give out a Hazen Horse of the Year, they're going to build a statue with that horse. I mean, he is he is bad news. Wow. Talking need, about need other to do steer that. wrestlers. Yeah. Oh, we need to do that? Yeah, you know Hazen what? That's a sponsorable year. asset. We'll uh, we'll talk about that. Bam. <laughs> Bam. Look we'll at split, we'll split the 3%. <laughs> <laughs> all good. <laughs> Talking about all the other Bulldoggers and Hazers that you guys travel around with, talk about the camaraderie that goes on with your guys' team. It's different. You just said, you know, the same guy is hazing for three different guys going for a world title. How does that work? Uh, my guys, I mean, you you know who they are. I mean, they're I don't care if they beat me. I mean, that's that's the thing about our group. We want to push each other to do better. And like I say, if I go out there and I'm three five, I want every one of them to beat me. If they can, if we can continue to push each other, and everybody's going to sit there and watch us whenever we pull in the rodeo, and they're going to start cussing, it's like, dang, these guys are here, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we're we're coming to get your money. I mean, that's that's, <laughs> that's, what our, right. that's what our plan is when we pull one, in, one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> How common is it for all three of you to pull the same check, or not the same check, but walk away with a fully loaded? Oh, uh, very. I mean, not to toot our own horn, but we, we, we have a lot of success out there. And I mean, and yeah, you're going to have your guys out there that make bad runs or even that make great runs on cattle that just aren't good enough to place on. But uh, in the same sense, I think I feel so much confidence to ride back in the box with my group of guys standing there be- beside me. I never have to worry about somebody getting my steer's head. I never have to worry about somebody standing in the box, somebody pushing my steer, any of that kinds of stuff. I mean, it's it's like clockwork. I mean, whenever one person runs, the other ones are grabbing horses, moving things around. They know where your stirrups go. They know what needs to be done for your run, everything like that. I mean, it, there's you never have to worry about getting somebody to help you, truly, the crew that we have. Yeah. That's a team. Well, speaking of a team, uh, one of your best teammates. I- I'm interested to hear how you landed Sarah Rose. Ah, I was lucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be more to it than just that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, she, me and Sarah, we uh, we started talking in 2016 before the uh, before the NFR. And uh, whenever we wound up coming home from the NFR, she didn't go back to Georgia. She came she came to Louisiana, and she's been there ever since. Uh, uh, about a year prior to that, whenever she was having a lot of success and everything, I can remember me and Rowdy Parrot was talking about her, and that's what I told her. I said, dude, I said, if I could ever just take her out to dinner, I said, that that would be the one girl I'd want to go ahead and take out to dinner. And, like, it was probably eight, nine months later, I said, Rowdy pulls up in Cheyenne, and she was sitting over by the trailer just chit-chat talking with us, and Rowdy rolls the window down and said, you did it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 16 was a good year for you. Yeah, then. 16 was a good year. <laughs> yeah. That's, it. you know, uh, it's crazy too going back off the topic of that, but for the the steer wrestling to me, is always one of them deals. Like you look at the top, just say twenty guys, is there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. You know, no. what I mean, like you're running and gunning, it, and it's that it's that one particular event that seems like you stub your toe somewhere, and there's somebody's coming to eat your lunch. Yeah, there. I mean, uh, the horsepower that there is nowadays in our event, the 
and, and I got to give it to I got to give it to some of the stock contractors out there. There's some of the stock contractors like uh, JJ Miller, uh, great guy from Texas. He is trying to get the most even set of. I mean, I think that's his goal is to have the most even set of steers there ever was. He is constantly making phone calls, trying to see what his steers look like at this rodeo, having guys write lists down on them. And whenever you pull up at a rodeo like uh, San Angelo, Texas, this past year, the start was very, very similar on every steer that you run. There was no tricky steers in there. It was whoever seen the best start or whoever uh, whoever took the best start and made the best run on the cows is the ones that got, that won the money. Yeah. And I mean that to me. I mean, there's a lot of times, we, and and in our event, we can't. We're not fortunate enough to just walk up and hey, we got a six second steer. You're not going to place on. We're not getting a rewrite. We're not yeah. getting a rerun. We're gonna have to, you know, load up. We're gonna have to go to the next one. But uh, the contractors, they're trying to, they're trying to make it a point to make their cattle as even as possible. And I mean, they're just getting it to where you don't want any reruns. I mean, heck, we were four five, uh, four point five seconds, but we were twentieth in line. Hey, that's great. I missed the barrier a little bit. That's my fault. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, the steers are getting are getting even. The horsepower is really good, and I mean, it's it's putting more opportunity on the table for guys to win. Let's take a quick pause, and we'll be right back. Looking to rope in some new news and features you can't find anywhere else? Then look no further than the series of blogs and vlogs at NFRExperience.com. You'll find customized content on all things rodeo and Las Vegas. There's the NFR Insider with Susan Canode, Hurley's Hotspots, NFR Experience, Junior World Finals, one-on-one with Wrangler contestants, Behind the Shoots, Heart of the NFR, and Gold Buckle Buzz. Every year, rodeo fans make their way to Las Vegas to immerse themselves in the Western lifestyle. For many, their NFR experience includes a trip or two to the Cowboy Channel Cowboy Christmas in search of more. More time with friends. More fashion. More entertainment. More choices. More autograph sessions. More you. And more Vegas. The Cowboy Channel Cowboy Christmas. December 1st through 10th at the Las Vegas Convention Center, South Halls. Open daily from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's all here. Every December, the next generation of rodeo stars makes the trek to Las Vegas to compete in the Yeti Junior World Finals. Watch the competition in nine events as these kids hope to open their presents early. For 10 days, it's all about more cowboys, more cowgirls, more competition, more champions, and more Vegas. Don't miss rodeos next up at the Yeti Junior World Finals. With the close-knit group you guys have in steer wrestling, give me your best traveling partner story. Who's best and who's worst to travel with? Mm, I don't have any worst to travel with. I've got, I mean, I'm I'm friends with, I'm, I get along great with everybody. Um, There's no idiosyncrasies, nothing weird that like this guy like sings off key while we're going down the road yeah, or <laughs> yeah Kyle, Kyle Irwin sings oh that makes key. total sense um Mark Joyner knows every song that has ever been on the radio and he will sing it every time <laughs> and we've tried to mess him up we put it on rap we put it on country we flipped it over to gospel and he is on key every single time I have no idea how he does it it's a weird hidden talent wow yeah um Tyler Pearson if he's not driving he's probably watching a movie and gonna holler at us to keep it down <laughs> Uh, the dad of the group. Yeah. And then while we're going down the road, we're normally all playing cards, driver included. So. What, uh, yeah. what, what, what game? What, we play pitch. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. I've got to learn how to play. That's great. I have no idea uh, what you're uh, talking hey, about. If you got 20 bucks, I'll teach you. Yeah. <laughs> well, sadly, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Funny story about that. <laughs> don't tell my wife I don't have 20 bucks either. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, how do you get ready for the NFR? Uh, I feel like I practice harder than anybody out there. And I, like I say, I'm not trying to brag on myself or anything like that. But uh, before the NFR, or heck, I guess from September 30th, we get home and I've got a guy right now, as soon as I leave out for the summer, he starts buying me steers. And whenever I get home, I'll have 40, 50 head of fresh steers. And as the fall goes on, he's steadily sending four or five of them a week in there, just fresh stuff to put in with ours, selling off some of the worst ones. And we get after it. I mean, we, we practice every single day. If it's dry, we're, we're running them off a horse. If it's wet, we're probably still going to be doing groundwork and dummy work and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I, I feel like we put in the time. How many steers are you throwing a day? Uh, whenever I'm practicing for the NFR, it, it's not crazy to shoot dog, say, 70 head of steers a day, a day, a day. day. Yes, sir. We'll run, uh, 
probably you know 12 to 15 steers a horseback and stuff not the same horse though i mean yeah. we, we take care of our good ones and we'll run one maybe two a day on them uh whenever we're getting ready for the nfr they get you know the couple weeks prior to the nfr we'll run probably four or five and get them really really tuned up hot and in shape then we'll go off get them injected get everything set up for them and then we'll come back in and run maybe one a practice session on them but i mean they the, the horses we take to the nfr they get they're they're in bubble wrap before we get over there yeah but uh but yeah the, our practice horses though i mean they're they're gonna be hard as a rock whenever we're done in the fall like they're they get no mercy <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do that uh like that aqua treadmill type stuff with your horses like your good ones to where they're staying in shape and low impact or anything like that or is it just uh we've riding? done we've done that before with them uh my wife uses like the beamer blanket and the theraplate and magna wave and all that kind of stuff she she does tons of she if, if there's something that needs to be done with the horse she is on top of it i mean that, i, I got to give that to her i mean from the from the feed program that they get to the the vitamins that they get in their feed to i mean they're shot like clockwork just every everything that they need they get i mean if, if she ever got to come down to picking between all the horses and me i'm probably going to be sleeping in the barn <laughs> <laughs> i guess you're in good company yeah i, I will be in good company <laughs> yeah what about your pregame routine? Like, is there something special you do before you go run your steer? Obviously, you're going to check your draw and all that. But, I mean, is there – do you have a, a set routine? Uh, Yeah, at all the rodeos, I do kind of – I'm I'm always the guy that I'm in the office whenever they draw. And everybody always gets bugged by me. Like, oh, yeah, you know, you know the draw is coming up. Wag's going to the office, you know. But I'll go down and write down all the steers that – me and whoever I'm traveling with have, I will go and look up all the records and I'll come back with a, almost a book, a sheet of paper with everything, who run your steer, where, uh, how he ran. Here's the guy's phone number. You can call it Randy before. Like I, I get, I kind of get into it. I, and I like to know what everybody has to, especially short rounds, which a lot of people don't probably shouldn't do that, but I, it's a strategy whenever we go to these different deals. I mean, I'll go to the short round and somewhere and I'll look and see what guys have, who's done what on them and all that kinds of stuff. So, Whenever, say, I'm halfway down the list, I know how hard I need to run at it. If I got a, a really, really good steer, one that I got a chance to win the round on, but everybody ahead of me has got steers that they've been five and six seconds on, well, heck, I'm just going to see an average start, go make my run, and take first, second, third place on the average, just safety up on it. But if I've got just a pretty good steer and all those guys ahead of me got, sure enough, pooches on the pin, I mean, hey, I've got to make something happen here. Right. And, I mean, it's it's, it's all preparation. you you got to be prepared for all that kind of stuff. And then – but you say as far as uh, routine, uh, my my routine at the NFR, I'll come down from the hotel room probably about 30 minutes before we got to head to the Thomas and Mac. I'll walk up to the card table, blackjack table normally, and I'll give them a $100 bill. They'll give me one black chip, and I'll put it down. And I'll keep playing that chip until I lose. Whenever I lose my $100, I'll go to the rodeo. All my bad luck's out of the way, and I'm ready to win. Oh, no. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is God, awesome. I got so much good luck coming. I've lost... <laughs> Lost a thousand bucks this year. <laughs> <laughs> Had to run ten of them. Oh, so but oh, wait, sorry. don't don't skip over that. Wait, how does that work if you actually get on a roll? What if you like time crunch? Nope, just sit there and play it out. You know, it's like to put eight hundred bucks up on a hand of blackjack yeah. and watch it go <laughs> away. <laughs> <sighs> I might have just shown my lack of Las Vegas. Yeah, gambling. funny story about that one too. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Was your wife strangling you at the time? Shh, don't no, no, my wife doesn't. Yeah, by the time, by time I get home, she'll hear this, Christmas. and then yeah. <laughs> so when you ride into the box, do you tune everything out? Because I've heard different people go, "Oh, I heard everything you said. I, I know exactly what happened. I was in the moment." And then I've heard it. I, I blacked out. I don't I even can, know what happened. I can talk to you. I can tell you a joke. I can do all that kinds of stuff whenever in the box, and it freaks everybody out. In 2016, I backed into the box in the tenth round, and all I had to do was throw the steer down. And Dakota Eldridge is sitting right next to me. I'm backed in the box on Cadillac, and the steer keeps laying down the chute. I mean, laying down, laying down. Will not get up. 45 seconds is gone. I'm already getting fined. Right, you know, and right. It, and it's, it's the steer will not get up. Right. So I walk up, go to turn around. The steer's laying down. I look down at Dakota. I said, so this is what icing the kicker feels like. And he looks <laughs> up at me. He goes, at a time like now. I said, yeah, hold on. I'll be right back. And I nodded my head. I was 4-4, four, four, placing around, threw him down. But he said, at a time like that, you can make a joke like this. Oh, yeah. So I was good. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, the only steer I was nervous in that building, the first one I ever run there, I was nervous. After that, I mean, I could block it out just like another rodeo. I mean, we, we've run millions of steers getting ready for that. I mean, like I say, when, when, at the end of the day, I'm backing in the box. It's This is my run on the steer that I've got drawn. Whatever you do or whatever they do, it doesn't affect me. I mean, I, I don't like to put that pressure on myself. That's awesome. 
step up there and swing. That's it. Yeah. That's impressive, the hundred dollars. I like that. That's I don't know that I'm you brave gotta, enough to do it. You gotta get your bad luck out. That's oh, I've got I, 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 I love I the hope. mindset. <laughs> yeah. What uh what about the horse you're riding right now? Uh I'm riding I got two horses that I'm riding right now. My my own horse, uh Cheese, he's a Palomino horse. I've rode him every every dollar I got one this year. I've won off of him. And then uh, I'm going to ride Casper a bunch this year, which is the horse I won the NFR on last year. He belongs to Tyler Pearson. Uh, both of those horses, I think you can bring them anywhere in the world and win. Uh, and I talked about it the other day. I'd feel confident if I had to ride cheese at the NFR this year. But I've had so much success on Casper, I, I'm not I'm not going to mess up something that's not that's not broke, you know. Yeah. So all the, like the Renos, the uh, Calgary, all the stuff where the big money's at and everything. It's fast starts and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna I'll gladly pay that twenty five percent knowing that I've got a great horse sitting underneath me, knowing he's worked in that situation before and all that kind of stuff. And I'm steadily getting impressed with my horse because I mean I rode him at Santone this year. I've rode him, you know, all these big rodeos this year and we have been steadily placing every single time. So I mean I'm really proud of him, but at the same sense I'm not gonna mess up something that's not broke. So I'm gonna continue right. to ride Casper as well. What did this world title mean to you? Uh, this world title, like I, I was more proud of this one than any other one, just for the, the comeback, you know, as far as being way behind after the second round. Um, but now as far as that goes, I mean, it, it just makes me hungry for more. I mean, uh, Oatberry was one of my idols whenever I was growing up. I was actually fortunate enough to be able to go and live with him. Oats got four. So, I mean, I, I gotta get five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm, just, yeah, I, I'm terrified of Oatberry. Right. He's the nicest man in the world. But you haven't lived he, with him. When he puts his hand on your shoulder and just, even if it's a gentle squeeze, oh. like it, I, I just, I, I curl up because I, I know that that just that hand can yeah. crush me. Oh no, it, I've I've lived with Oat. I mean, he he is a, a can I say dick? He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You uh, just he's, did. Yeah. He's he's great. I mean, he's great to be around. Love him to death, but. <laughs> Well, he will go out of his way to just put salt in the wound all the time, <laughs> and we pick at each other all the time too. It's we even whenever uh and like and him and Byron Walker are real good buddies and stuff. They're always cracking jokes on one another. So whenever I get a joke cracked on one of the other ones, I always got to call the other one and tell him what we got going on. So <laughs> just set him up for failure. He had that is a man amongst men. We were doing the junior world finals a couple of years back, and we're sitting down kind of like this, and we're up on this pedestal, uh, you know, podium or whatever it is, and uh, man, we come up and just kind of sitting and you just feel like this weird kind of like the shark in the water thing and this hand like droops over your shoulder hey steve here's what i need i'm like whatever you need you just let me know and i'd be happy to make that happen if it's in yeah. my power but. when the middle of his palm touches yeah. your shoulder blade and his fingers run down into your pocket yeah. because that's how big they are mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's a little bit intimidating yeah big, big guy cool dude yeah. yeah he's done a lot too for that you know that junior world finals deal of what he's doing for hey, he's Opening up some doors for, right. which is great. I think I think they need to be ten different associations like that for the kids. You know, yeah. I mean, whenever I graduated high school, it was load up and beat the wolves or go get you a job. Right. You know, whereas right now, I mean, it's uh, there's like there's a, a young man living at my house right now, uh, Cash Raw from Utah. He's won the high yeah, school finals. Yeah. He won Oatberry's deal. Yeah. And he's been going around with us, going all the circuit rodeos and all that kind of stuff. And we sneak off and bring him to all these junior events and all kinds of stuff. Right. And I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, this we're. Yeah, throwing this kid into the dang, I mean, in throwing a wolf in there, and I yeah. mean, he's he's in there practicing with us and everything. He's getting all these opportunities to go to, and he's building tons and tons of confidence. So, yeah. like, a, I mean, I'm excited for him whenever he does break down and get his rookie card and stuff and ready to go. Because I mean, it's all these opportunities of places that he's had to go growing up. I mean, it's a, it's it knocks the pressure off of so many right. people, and it having these opportunities it gets kids that are maybe that team rope as they're young or calf rope whenever they're young i mean they can get into different events because there's places to go now yeah well and it's different too because it's not just you're winning a feed bucket right. or a halter you're no, winning I mean, real money oh, yeah. i mean there's serious opportunities oh, absolutely out there. that 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 kid's 18 years old he's like i say he's living at my house in the month of december he won 30 something thousand dollars yeah. bulldogging that's all right you know i mean that's that's Not great bad. yeah and that one well, that deal too like oats deal is i think it's a hundred thousand on that thing for cash and then they have scholarships and they have saddles and they have yetis it's like these kids are walking away with some real scratch absolutely yeah and that's what you got to do too be i mean you look at what it is too to where if you want to take the incentive away show them a fuel bill mm -hmm. you know to where like you have to have that in front of you of like hey i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go do good i've got the you know got the foundation got all the support and everything i'm gonna go out and i've got i'm staring at a check when i well, come home well, 
parents don't really want to sit there in the practice pen with you, knowing that this weekend they got to drive six hours with five dollars a gallon right. fuel, and you're going to get <laughs> yeah. a ribbon when you get right. done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to put forth the time in your practice, then I mean, heck, we we need some success or to get something back out of it. And it's 100%. like I say, the opportunities are getting really good. Yeah. So, and especially, like I said, the steer wrestling too, it's like, you're, I mean, that's so amazing that you're mentoring these kids like that, because that's also, that's, what's good for the sport. You know I mean? That's like, this is the next level, the next generation of these kids and they're coming up, they're learning how to do it the right way. When you're raised amongst champions, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be champion yourself. You can, if we call him right now, we can ask him where he's going to school at and he'll say WT. Wagaspec Tech. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, we'll go right back to it and we'll ask him, what's rule number one? It's you can't marry a barrel racer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it pisses my wife off every time we do it. Jeez, I guess so. But he'll say it every time. Yeah, don't marry a barrel racer. Uh -huh. Well, keep bringing along that next generation and, and we look forward to hopefully watching you get five so that you can pour a little salt in Oat Berry's wound. That's right. That's right. Thanks for joining us, Tyler. We really appreciate your time. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks, Wags. Good luck. Want to experience more of the NFR? Then visit nfrexperience.com. And we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you're listening right now. If you like what you've heard on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. Subscribe.